Hi everyone, my name is Missy Gun on Instagram, Teachers Pay Teachers, and of course, MissyGun.com. Today, I am bringing you five ways to use Google Jamboard in your classroom. Whether you're wanting to make your lessons more engaging, or if you're teaching virtually and you want to introduce some digital tools, this video is for you. If you're unfamiliar with Google Jamboard, it's actually an interactive whiteboard that can be used by students of all ages, it can be used in any subject, and it can be used in any, any setting. It can be used in the classroom, or it can be used virtually, or remotely, or digitally, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> this is a great tool that will keep your students engaged, and I am ready to get into the ways that you can start using it, possibly today. The first way you can use Jamboard is by uploading a template or using the tools that they already have embedded. As I said before, it is an interactive whiteboard, so you can go in, click the pen marker tool, and start writing on it and have your students either answer questions on their personal whiteboards or come up to your smart board or your computer and have them show their work. Another cool thing is you can share the link to that same exact Jamboard with your students and they can go in as well and write on it. Now, I'll give you a closer look into how you can do that with the templates and using it with the embedded tools. The first thing you need to do is create a Jamboard. You do this by going to your Google Drive, clicking New, and then clicking More, and then click Google Jamboard. From there, it'll load a brand new Google Jamboard template. The first way I'm gonna show you is using the embedded tools option. So to use the embedded tools, you will look at the toolbar, click the text box option, and use the text box to type in whatever question or equation you have for your students that you want them to answer. Once you type in whatever it is that you want your students to answer, you can actually readjust this box so that way it looks a little bit bigger for your students so it's easier for them to see. Readjust the box to your liking, and from there, you can also write directly on the board. To upload a template, simply look at the toolbar, Click the picture option and find a PNG or JPEG file to upload as your template. And then you can stretch it to your liking once it is loaded to Jamboard. Remember, the file has to be PNG or JPEG for it to work. Some of the tools we have on the toolbar are the writing tools, the eraser, the arrow or select option, the sticky notes, the add image, the circle, the text box, and the magic laser. This brings me to my second way that Google Jamboard can be used in the classroom. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is more geared towards math teachers, but ELA teachers, science teachers, and social studies teachers, I'm pretty sure you can use it as well with your own thing. But for math teachers, I'm talking about number talks. When I first transitioned into virtual learning, I did not know how I could incorporate my number talks into the virtual setting because I was so used to using post-it word paper, having my equation written on the board, and then writing and drawing the kids thinking with different colored markers and i'm just like what tool can i use in this setting because i really want to see what my kids are thinking and how they're thinking how they're utilizing those strategies if they're retaining them so when i discovered google jamboard i was able to do that for me i found the best way to conduct a number talk in the virtual setting is to use the embedded tools by clicking the text option type in the equation that you want your students to solve for the day and then using the marker tool, use three different colors to represent three different students' thinking. 
For face-to-face -face teaching, I think this is an awesome way to save those different number talks that you do throughout the year. And so you can always go back and review weekly or quarterly or monthly. The third way you can use Google Jamboard in your classroom was actually my first way of using Google Jamboard in my classroom, and that is as an exit ticket. So when you're teaching in person, you know exit, ticket, exit tickets can really drive your instruction and let you know what your students know and how to um, reconvene the next day or possibly the next week. And so it's just as effective in the virtual setting um, and it's still effective in the in-person setting. All right, so there's two ways that you can use Jamboard as an exit ticket. So we'll call this like part A, part B. <laughs> So the first way you can use it as an exit ticket is create one exit ticket, um, one Jamboard template with either a template that you upload or with the embedded tools. And then you would send the link to your students and allow them all to enter that Jamboard at once. Your students would not write on the Jamboard. What you would do is tell them to use the sticky note. Now you might be wondering, what if I have multiple classes? What can I do? Well, when I taught multiple classes, I kept track of which groups answered by telling them that they had a specific color that they needed to use for their sticky notes. So my first group, they had to use the pink, the next group had to use green, the next group always had to use orange. And that was always their colors for when they had exit tickets in Jamboard. To change sticky note colors, your students simply have to click the sticky note on the toolbar, then pick whichever color you've assigned to their class. Once they've done this, have them write their answer and their name so you know who wrote what. And then from there, they have to click the save button. Once they click save, they're able to attach their answers to your Jamboard. Now you can actually resize these sticky notes, but it's up to you. Now I'm gonna show you what it will look like if you have a student who writes the wrong answer on accident. If they wrote the wrong answer on accident and they wanted to change their answer, they don't have to get a brand new sticky note. They can actually double click on the sticky note and it'll allow them to edit their sticky. Remember, remind your students to move their sticky notes out of the way because as you can see, all the sticky notes land in the same space. The next way that you can use Google Jamboard as an exit ticket is creating one exit ticket and making copies for your students. And I'll show you how to create a copy for each student. First, you're gonna click the blue share button. Once you do that, you're going to make sure it's set to anyone with this link can do whatever. Change the option to editor. Once you change it to editor, copy the link and paste it in your chat box. But before you send it, you're going to erase everything up to that backslash. Erase all of that and change it to the word copy. And that will allow your students, well, it'll force your students to make their very own copy of the Jamboard. Speaking of exit tickets, that brings me to the fourth way you can use Google Jamboard in your classroom. The fourth way you can use Google Jamboard is as a one-to-one -one assessment. Now, I just showed you how you can have your students make a copy and do their own exit tickets. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can make a copy of your own for each student in your classroom so that you can conduct one-to-one -one assessments. First, head to that Jamboard in your Google Drive, right-click it, and rename it to something like original or first copy. I always use the word original because then it lets me know that this is the one that I can actually edit. From there, you're going to right click again and make a copy. When you make a copy, you're going to want to name it after the student who will be taking that assessment or doing that exit ticket um, one on one. Since Google is not 100% secure, I do recommend naming it possibly like the student's first name and their last initial or just their initials and like the name of the assessment, but do not use their full name because Google is not 100% secure. You're gonna repeat that process for how many other students you have in your classroom.
Now, once you click one of those assessments, you'll notice that they actually have their very own code. Every time you make a copy, your Jamboards get their own individualized codes. So you don't have to worry about another student um, seeing another student's test. The only thing you would need to do is make sure you change those share options so that way whoever you'll be assessing will be able to get into their assessment um, at the same time that you're in there. Now I know it's very time consuming, but it's worth it. For example, if you are a reading teacher and you need to do a running record, this is perfect for it. You can just screenshot the book, have it on different slides, and just circle as the student reads. Make those notes as the student reads. And it's a great tool. Just remember to always make those copies and name the Jamboard after the child so that way you don't get them mixed up. It is my last way of using Google Jamboard in your classroom. The last way to use Google Jamboard in your classroom is probably the most engaging way, and that is using it as a center or a station. And so I've created plenty of math games that you can use in Google Jamboard. Like you can just get it out and after seeing this video, start playing with your students. <laughs> but it is a way for students to collaborate and do something fun. I know we all miss having our centers and stations in the classroom. That was probably your student's favorite time of the day as well as yours. And it was kind of robbed from us during this whole distance learning experience. But you can get a deck. I'm giving it to you back. So I've created plenty of games that you can have your learners play. Some of them do require some facilitation. For example, my board game, my fluency board game, which is editable and can be used for any grade. It has a virtual die included in it, so that way your students do not have to worry about using real die, just in case they don't have those materials at home. Um, and you as a teacher would facilitate with younger learners by just being in control of the virtual die, letting them know, okay, you rolled this amount of this number and you can move this amount of spaces. Because Google Jamboard allows so many students in there at one time, it is an awesome collaborative space. Those are the five ways for you to use Google Jamboard in your classroom, whether you're virtual or in person. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you use Google Jamboard in your classroom and if you use it the same way or if you have a different method of how you use Google Jamboard with your students. Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe. <laughs>